Welcome back everyone. So the other day, actually yesterday, I just finished talking about the iPad first generation and it was so interesting to see what Apple was pretty much able to do at that time. I mean, it's so crazy to see what just the first iPad, first iPhone, all these types of firsts for these, you know, developers and these manufacturers what they're able to do with these type of devices. And what I can tell you is, is that the successor of the first iPad, which was the iPad second generation, this was honestly one of the biggest upgrades going from one iPad to the other. I can't think of any iPad, maybe the iPad, you know, second gen to the third gen, but even that, that wasn't really as crazy of an upgrade as these two devices. The first iPad feels like a relic, where the second iPad actually still could be usable for some people. Honestly, I would not recommend anybody using this iPad, but I will leave, you know, some of my favorite iPads this year for the price and everything. I'll leave those linked down below. You can get them from Amazon and help support the channel at the same time. Now on the front of the iPad second generation, we had that 9.7 inch IPS panel, which was pretty much the same panel for the most part as a previous, you know, first iPad. And I don't really think that's a bad thing, but it is something to kind of keep in mind. You know what I mean? If you're trying to go and use an iPad like this, you're really not going to feel like you have a super outdated or ugly panel. And that's a huge asset for these type of devices. And uh, even for many years after the iPad, the first iPad, that 9.7 inch panel was recycled. That screen size was recycled over and over again until pretty recently within the last two years. So this iPad panel is still pretty good for the most part. It's not like amazing, but considering this thing came out in 2011, I think it's actually pretty decent in my opinion. You have quite a bit of bezel around the whole entire panel, the home button on the front as well but for the most part, still feels extremely premium, still feels extremely good for the most part too, and I think that's a really huge asset for this device. Now you do have the 30 pin connector, the older one, on the bottom, not a big deal, but again, it's something to keep in mind. You do have a headphone jack on this thing too, which is great. And on the back, the aluminum back as always. And as I stated, I mean, this is one of the best feeling iPads. This is still a really good feeling iPad for the most part. It doesn't feel cheap. None of these iPads have ever felt cheap where there's been iPhones that don't really feel the best sometimes like the iPhone 5C. I think an iPhone 7 doesn't feel crazy premium. But this iPad still feels really, really good, just about the same as every other iPad that's ever came out, which I think is a huge asset for it. And on that aluminum back, you do have a camera setup. And this thing actually had a camera on the back and the front. And as I stated before, that was also one of the biggest differentiating factors from the original iPad. And this one, the first iPad didn't have any cameras. This iPad had both a front camera and a back camera, which I stated before is a humongous asset for it. And I think when you're going from one generation to the other, it's really important to have those type of differentiating factors. Now, 0.7 megapixel back facing camera, a VGA front camera, nobody was, you know, thinking this thing was going to, you know, replace their, you know, DSLR at the time or anything. But more so than that, because we already had FaceTime, we already had some of those softwares already, you know, on our iPhones, it was really cool that we could already have that capability on this specific iPad on something that was a little bit bigger. So for those type of people who wanted to have a little bit of a bigger display or whatever the case is, you would be able to get that from your iPad second generation. And I think that in and of itself is another really huge asset of this type of device. When you have something like with, like with this iPad that has both the front and back camera, you're pretty much set for a while. And let alone the software aspect of it, the camera aspect is a really awesome thing about this iPad. Now, of course, it's not a great camera anymore. It's not even a good camera. It's pretty pixelated. It's grainy. I don't even think you could make videos on this thing. You might be able to, but it's not really, it's really only good for FaceTime calls. And even that isn't even that great. But the fact that it had cameras, when you look at the previous iPad to this one, there was some really big changes and the camera addition was a huge one. And ever since then, it's been there to stay. So of course it's not really worth, you know, hitting on for 45 minutes, but I think it's a pretty good iPad in terms of the camera setup for sure. So in terms of the camera, that pretty much covers it up. But there is one area where this iPad shocked me for sure and it probably shocked everyone, and it's probably one of the more shocking aspects of the iPad second generation, even now in 2021, and it's just the longevity of the software. When this iPad originally came out, it came out with iOS 4, okay? Didn't, didn't even have, like, I mean, that's crazy, iOS 4, that feels like forever ago. I feel like I was a baby then, but this thing eventually ended off pretty on a pretty decent version of software, iOS 9.3.5, apparently, from what I'm reading. It may have even got a little bit further, who knows? And that's a pretty decent longevity, long life cycle that this iPad had. 
Now, it is pretty outdated. It's severely outdated, in my opinion. You didn't get, you know, all the, you know, newer editions of what iOS 11 brought. And considering we're almost in a couple of months getting the betas of iOS 15, this thing is pretty outdated. But the fact that it had that long of a life cycle, the fact that the first iPad didn't even have that big of a life cycle, this one pretty much reincarnated everything that the iPad, you know, first iPad kind of messed up at. This is seriously one of the biggest improvements, I think, Apple has ever done from one iPad to the other, and the software really showed for it. Apple supported this thing for such a long time. And what's very interesting as well is that Apple, I think, did increase the battery just by a little bit going from the first iPad to the other, and they actually did, you know, end up making it a little bit thinner as well. This thing had a 6,930 mAh battery. I think the previous iPad had a 6,600 mAh battery. So you already had a big jump in every other area, but the software had a much longer life cycle and the battery life ended up getting better as well. And it came in a better form factor in my opinion. It felt extremely premium. And as always, Apple made really extremely, extremely premium iPads and this was no exception. So at this point, we have an iPad that had an additional cameras on it that the first iPad didn't. It had, I think, a better looking screen, probably, probably not, it's probably the same. Still felt extremely premium, but you had a much longer life cycle on it in terms of software, and you had a bigger battery. That is a pretty big improvement in my head, and we're not even all the way through. I mean, even in the performance segment, this iPad also got a pretty big increase, you know, in terms of the first generation to the other. Now we had that Apple A5 chip inside of it, which I think was about the same thing as like an iPhone 4S, which I think was pretty good. Now you did have half a gig of RAM. So right now in this day and age, it's really not a lot, but considering where we were at before, when we had that iPad first generation with a quarter of gig, you know, that thing, we kind of doubled the RAM. I wish it was more, honestly, like there's nothing we can do about it, but we did get an increase in the RAM, which I think is really cool. The fact that it, you know, doubled in RAM overnight from one, or not overnight, but from one generation to the other. I think that's an extremely cool thing that this iPad had. And at the end of the day, the performance of this iPad at that time was probably good. In this day and age, it's probably not great. You know, I wouldn't think anybody's going to be using this iPad as their main device or their main machine. But at that time, it's pretty surprising of what this iPad was able to do. And as I stated before, when you have an iPad like this, you're definitely going to be able to be okay at a certain point. But anything after, like even if you want to use this thing as like a media machine or something, it's really not going to give you that good of a performing, you know, it's not going to give you good performance at all. But when you consider the fact that this iPad had that type of capability at that time, it really does put things in perspective considering it was so much faster than the previous generation before it and it you know, had way more RAM and all that stuff. So I think for sure at the end of the day, this iPad, I don't really want to, you know, make the performance seem like it was bad, you know, because it's bad now, but it wasn't bad at that time. And I'll definitely tell you when it came down to it, this iPad shocked me, you know, it's, it's just an overall shocking, you know, iPad. And that's probably the best way I can sum up this whole entire video. At the end of the day, this iPad had so much more capability than the predecessor. And I don't really want to say if this iPad is worth it or not worth it. I'll probably tell you it's not worth it anymore. It may be worth it in a couple years for as like a collector's item, but it's definitely not worth any, you know, it's not really worth a lot anymore. But there were a lot of improvements going from the predecessor to this one. And when you look at a lot of iPads, like when you go from the fourth generation iPad to the third one or vice versa, or the iPad mini four to the mini five, there are for sure improvements. But you're still kind of thinking to yourself like, yeah, the, but the predecessor is still pretty good. You know, we do that with iPhones and phones all the time. But with this iPad, going from the iPad 1 to the iPad 2 was probably one of the biggest changes of any iPad or probably one of the biggest changes of any Apple product, at least in the last since probably at least like since 2010. Of course, since like the iPhones and stuff, those have been seeing huge improvements too. But there were a humongous changes between the first iPad to this one. So that really pretty much covers it up. If you guys want to pick up some iPads that I would recommend this year. As I stated before, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. But that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, leave those down in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much for you guys to get hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything, also every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.